So, is the Valkyria Chronicles 4 DLC worth picking up? Nah, not really. Okay, bye! Okay, seriously. All the DLC has been released for Valkyria Chronicles 4 and you might be asking yourself if any of it is worth picking up. So I've taken up the monetary burden for you to help answer that question. Let's go through all six DLCs. The most expensive and suspect of all the DLCs, the Swimsuit DLC. The main reason someone's picking this up is if you really want to see the main cast in skimpy outfits and lascivious poses. It's all fairly absurd, but there probably wasn't going to be any way that it wouldn't be absurd. You do get an original map to play the mission on, and it's a quite nice looking map. But the crux of the mission involves trying to find hidden aces in tight corners of the map, to the point where it feels like the map has been designed around that, which is just frankly annoying and unfun in my opinion. The only lasting equipment you get out of it are the swimsuits for the main cast and nothing else. So if you really wanted to turn Claude into a sexy commander for all your other missions, then you might want to pick this up. But if you don't care about having everyone in a swimsuit, then you could honestly just watch all the scenes on YouTube and save your money. You won't get anything else out of this DLC. A Captainless Squad is a series of missions where you play as a handful of Squad E members exclusively. No main cast, so no orders and minimal CP per turn. Certain to provide a bit of a challenge, unless your level is maxed out. Even then, the story is fun, and if you really enjoy the Squad characters in these games, then I think you'll find yourself enjoying this DLC a lot. The final level of the DLC involves you going up against the main cast of the game, which is a really fun idea for a mission. You get a few decent and interesting weapons out of it, but if you're already at max level or close, then they'll be a bit obsolete by this point. And if you don't care about the Squad E characters as much, then I think the enjoyment you'll get out of this will be diminished. The expert level skirmishes in the first game were truly hardcore. It was a real challenge to simply complete them, and they were a proper test even for the most adept players. Expert skirmishes in Valkyria Chronicles 4 doesn't hold as strongly to the title of expert as much as the first game does. Some pose a bit of a challenge, but feel a more puzzle-like than an outright realistic and hardcore challenge like the first game's DLC did. Most of them are actually completely easy, and some can be completed in a single turn. Some of the skirmishes in the main game pose a stronger challenge, which goes to show just how expert this pack actually is. This is the pack that contains the strongest weapons in the game, if that's what you're looking for. Overall, it's a bit of a weak showing for an expert DLC, and if you want a real test to your abilities, the expert DLC for Valkyria Chronicles 1 is significantly better. In this DLC, you play as Dueling Valkyria, Sylvaria and Cremaria, two missions where you get to choose which Valkyria you want to play, with the objective being to destroy the other. The missions are oriented around their powers, so they make for a very unique experience. The Crimaria mission is properly challenging. It took me like an hour to finish it. The Selvaria mission, on the other hand, is very easy. Maybe finished it in under 10 minutes? I'm not sure if this was a thematic choice since Savaria is meant to be the stronger Valkyria between the two, but I do wish it put up as much of a fight as the Crimaria mission. The story and the justification is just a very thin excuse for a Valkyria fight, which is okay, but it would have been nice to see something a little more interesting story-wise. Just a side note, Silvaria's original English voice actor, April Stewart, does not return and is replaced by Tara Platt. Tara Platt is a decent voice actor, and cast in the right role she can be great, but I will say I miss April Stewart's performance. After you finish both missions, you have Silvaria, Primaria, Chiara, and Nicola as recruitable characters. Powers intact. Primaria and Silvaria are so incredibly strong that you'll probably make the entire game boring by using them. They turn even the hardest missions into a cheese fest. If you're having trouble max ranking, then you might want to pick up this DLC just for them. But it is sort of cheating using them. Chiara and Nicola are okay, they're limited by their crossbows I feel, although they can be turned fairly easily into strong anti-armor options. Their crossbows, the Dunkel, 
Dunkel, I don't know, also becomes available for your other scouts if you're keen on using it without having to deploy Chiara and Nicola. The cast of villains also comes in swimsuits if you're into that sort of thing. The mission you get here is not even worth discussing. An easy and basic version of the farm map that you would have played dozens of times already. You do get Edie out of this mission though. She's an above average shock trooper, but you have such a huge selection of shock troopers to begin with. You have to ask yourself, do you really want to pay for one extra unit? A joint mission with the main cast of the first game, which ends up being a bit of cheap appeal to nostalgia for fans of the series. You actually get a decent amount of scenes in the DLC, and it will legitimately take some time to finish. Most of the English voice cast does not return, save for Colleen O'Shaughnessy, which is a shame because most of the original cast was quite talented. In my Valkyrie Chronicles review, I stated that I wasn't especially keen on Colleen O'Shaughnessy as Alicia, but honestly, hearing her say lines again as Alicia really did give me a quick rush of nostalgia. If you're more accustomed to the Japanese dub, then I think you'll get a lot more out of the DLC since all the original members return to reprise their roles. The missions are just readjusted versions of the maps from Valkyrie Chronicles 4, so they're not especially exciting missions, but it is still fun regardless to have some extra scripted missions to play on. You do get the entire main cast of the first game as recruitable soldiers though, and they're all quite strong too. You also get the Edelweiss, which is the best addition since it means you can field another heavy tank. It has low AP and isn't very accurate, but it has very high HP and deals a lot of damage. If you're a sucker for nostalgia, want an extra tank to deploy, or in need of a few buffed units for taking on the harder skirmishes, then maybe pick this up. But if you're not super interested in that stuff, then I would probably say that you don't really need to pick this up. There's simply not enough that's original here, and it's just a reiteration of all the character beats that you already know. Although I will give this a firmer recommendation for those who are more accustomed to the original Japanese dialogue. So there you have it, all the Valkyrie Chronicles 4 DLC. If I were to rank them in terms of which ones are the most worth picking up, it would be something like this. Valkyrie Chronicles 4 isn't exactly a AAA game, so if you're keen to support it, then you might want to pick up the DLC. That was my personal motivation for buying all of it. But if you're on the fence or keen to save a bit of money, then I would say you're fine without it.